Shall we begin? Let's begin now. I was actually the original announcer for the first incarnation of Samurai Jack. Well, the next Samurai Jack, Jack gets into the so that and the other, and a uh, production assistant. At the time, he's a production assistant. He's probably a mad executive. He's probably an executive now over there. His name is um, Larry Morris. He heard me doing these bumps and heard me doing the Samurai Jack announcer stuff. And he ran to Dave Willis and Matt Malero, the co-creators of Aqua Team. He said, you got to hear this Karen Means guy. He'd be great for this food show product thingy that you're putting on. I actually did a overdub for a Japanese softcore hentai called A Very Private Lesson. Google that. Whatever it is you kids do today. They, they misspell my name, though. They call me Corey Mans or something like that. But they since corrected it. But yeah, that was back before I even did Cry Like Her. I don't know what I can see. I was like, this is it. I'm about to start doing the, the, the English overdub for this Japanimation. They never call me again. But it's a very private lesson. You can look it up. Check it out. Well, maybe not. It depends. We'll be uh, but you mean, have you seen it? Do you do, yeah, yeah. you do your research on these shows? Uh, do yeah. you even watch the shows we're talking about? Have you even seen my show? A little bit. A little bit. Okay. Right. I, I'll let you have a pass on that. It's okay. It's all right. Now it's something for him to do. He can do his homework. Go home and watch the hey, past season of the Mighty Boys. Aqua Team. But anyway, Dana Snyder, myself, and Dave Willis are also doing a new show called no! Welcome to the Wayne <laughs> on Nickelodeon. Yeah, pleasure, man. That was What's the next time That's William Saylor's over there. He's doing an interview too. The regular show. The raccoon on the regular series. I would love to I would love to sit down with you again. Yeah. We hey, we don't step on nobody's toes. We, I, I think I I'm doing pretty good. Over overlapping interviews. That's that's what we do when we're doing one day cons. We're pressed for time. And we have to make sure we get it all in. So anyway, welcome to the Wayne was just nominated for an Emmy. I found out. For Billy Lopez, the creator of the show for social media. So welcome to the Wayne, WTTW for short. Look for that. And the voices sound uh, a lot like Aquatine. If you can pan around and get some of this stuff. Thundercrease. I was Thundercrease on the Brack show. And of course, Frylock, Aquatine Hunger Force. And get my price list while you're at it, because if I come to a con near you, those are my prices. I keep it simple. You know. So anyway, what's your next question? Um, are we done? That's it. Hey, thanks. No, sorry. Go ahead. What made you want to start voice acting? I grew up with uh, Warner Brothers cartoons, man. Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Three Stooges, Jerry Lewis movies. Just random stuff, man. They, there was no internet when I was growing up as a lad in St. Louis, so I had to depend on whatever came on the tele. You know what I'm saying? If I turn on and see an old, an old uh, Martin and Lewis movie or... Watching old Warner Brothers cartoon, I found out that Mel Blanc did most of those voices throughout his career. And, you know, he banged on Warner Brothers' door for like three years before he even got his foot in the door. So I was influenced by uh, Mel Blanc, man. My Uncle Mel, my Uncle Rodney Dangerfield. You know, these boys in the life characters, characters that pop out at me on the screen. Characters that, that, that are, are memorable. You know what I'm saying? Like Bugs Bunny. Daffy Duck, Porky Pig. I mean, this stuff is like, one guy's doing all these voices? Wow, that's pretty cool. So, you know, I decided to try my hand at it. You know, I used to be able to do impressions when I was in school. I could do my teachers, faculty members, students. You know, if I found out that you had a unique voice and I could mimic you, I would do it. And then when, when they finally dropped and my voice got real deep, I was like, hmm, I might try this singing thing too. So I've done the, I've sang an Atlanta Opera Chorus, the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra Chorus. I started out in theater, and uh, I found out that I had a knack for this type of stuff. And the rest, as they say, is history. There you have it. So, what tips would you give to other aspiring voice actors? You know, somebody asked Don LaFontaine that in an interview that, 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 that they did with it. You know what he said? They have to wait till I die. He's dead. Hello. But anyway, <laughs> sorry. Rest in peace, Mr. Monsieur Lafontaine. I'm assuming it's French. But advice? My advice would be read, read a lot. Read aloud a lot. Um, just 
take it all in. Watch your environment, because everybody knows a Carl. Everybody knows a Shake. Everybody knows somebody like these characters that we watch on TV. I mean, there's pavilion Carl's walking around New York and New Jersey and even Philly. You know what I'm saying? Guys that talk like that. Stay away from my freaking car! Get out of my pool! There's always people like that around. I didn't do Carl, but that's Dave Willis, who is the voice of Carl, Ignignot, Boxy Brown even. So, you know, it's just that whatever it is you love to do, don't give up. Keep plugging at it. I'm still plugging at it. I ain't made it to his level yet. I'm trying to get there. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't know I was at that level. You're at that level. Are you kidding me? Your show's still on, isn't it? No. Oh, snap. <laughs> That's your regular. That's your regular. Oh, oh, he's not that regular.